Hey guys, uh, welcome to Monomotion uh, video channel, Monomotion Canada. Um, if you haven't been with us before, uh, you might uh, have a look at our CRF450L uh, build videos. Um, it's a little bit different than what I'm doing today. And for those of you waiting for the next video in that series, um, it's coming. Sorry, I've, I've ran into some issues uh, with the fuel, with the water tank from underneath. So getting those sorted out and then we'll continue on doing some filming. So um, common issue with older, um, if you didn't know, if, you fr if you're from my 450 channel or 450 series, uh, I do a lot of work on Harley Davidson's, um, mainly older ones. I don't get, really get into the M8s that much, but twin cams and older. This, these are two carburetors that are for the Evo. They're known as a, as a CVK. Uh, this is an original Harley Davidson Kian. This one is a copy. Um, this carb is discontinued and you didn't want to pay for it anyway. It's, it's a really, really expensive carburetor for what it is. This $100 Amazon, uh, Canadian, $100 Amazon carb. Um, it's, uh, there's cheaper ones, there's more expensive ones. I, I took a look at a bunch of them and uh, this is the one I got. Um, why am I putting a cheap piece of crap carburetor on somebody's Evo um, who I'm just putting a new motor into and, and such? I'll show you why here. Um, this carburetor, this is the original. Um, this is the pin that holds the floats. Now, I'm going to assume you know what this does in this, in this carburetor. Um, if you don't understand carburetors, please pause here, go back to YouTube and go look at one of the multi-million videos out there on, on what a carburetor does and how it works. So I guess I got to hold this in place. Um, that should be a machine fit, by the way. Now machine fit means there's a little bit of resistance for it to go together, but it, it, it shouldn't take a tap of a hammer or anything. But I'm just going to bring that up to the camera there. And you can probably see how loose that guy is in there. I'm just going to take the floats off, um, take the float out. Um, that's the needle valve. It was a brand new needle valve from the All Balls kit, so I'm not worried about that. But um, if you look here, you can see that this guy, this is the worst side, um, how, how bad it is. So a friend of mine gave me another one um, to try, and uh, we didn't realize. Also, somebody had punched a hole through the carburetor but anyways so that's what you get into when you get into a carb from 1988 these days is it's had a lot of hands in it over the years now um, I'm just gonna set that one aside there's a lot of good parts still in here like this is the original Kian emulsion tube what they call an emulsion tube um, this is the Venturi end to that emulsion tube that's how they sit inside the carb body um, this is a needle. I haven't, I didn't read the number, um, but it's a 145 needle, which is a, a pretty common needle for, for an Evo. Just a stock motor. This is the uh, vacuum uh, connection, uh, fuel connection. This is, sits on top of the, the, um, the spring, the CV spring. Again, if you don't understand how CV carb works, I get it. Not everybody does, but please there's tons of videos. I don't need to remake something that's been made a hundred times already on, on what a constant velocity or CV carburetor does. But this slide moves up and down by vacuum, basically. Um, I think you can see all the marks on this guy. So th there's nothing wrong that's happening there. It's just age. It's been around for a long time, so this isn't going to get reused. Um, this carburetor also comes with this pack of, of needles, or sorry, pilot jets and main jets. Um, it's a very simple carburetor. So it's, you know, um, I may reuse, I may not. We'll, we'll, once we get into it, we'll see. I haven't taken this apart yet. I haven't even looked at it yet. So this is your fuel metering screw. Um, basically on carburetors in general, this is the engine side. This is the airbox side. So if your metering screw is on this side, it's adjusting fuel. If it's on this side, it's adjusting air. So that, um, 
I know it's kind of a general rule of thumb. There are some carburetors out there that are different, but 99% of the carburetors um, that you're going to see on a Japanese or an American motorcycle are going to be that way. Um, so I'm going to pop this apart. I'm going to start from the top down and we'll see. Oh, this is the old choke cable. Um, this is one thing I did do. I just wanted to see what it came with for, for a choke. So that's their adapter and that's their choke rod. Um, I haven't put a mic on it to see if it's exactly the same size. I don't think I need to, but um, it, it looks to be the same size. So this will probably get the new one because this one has had, you know, years of wear on it, it has the new spring. I'm going to reuse this and this is a brand new choke cable anyway. The old choke cable on this bike was, you know, lunch. So I'll just set that aside for now. So to get this off, you've got a throttle plate, um, and I'm just comparing these. The reason I've got the old carburetor set aside or torn apart here already, I wanted to compare um, the two pieces together. So this is the the uh, throw the plate that holds the uh, um, the throttle cables. So just doing a an eye to eye. You know the. Uh, the Chinese are doing exactly what the Japanese did, which is they're copying, um, you know, when, when the Japanese started like in the 50s, um, sending us products in North America, they were basically for the most part copying a lot of the stuff that was out there. So looking at this, the, uh, the throttle stop screw and everything, generally the same length. Um, this is a true Phillips head true Phillips and this is a combination uh, the combination it allows you to use a flat blade in there that's because uh, you know um, a lot of older Harley tuners don't prefer to use a flat blade it's whatever you prefer I, I, I use all Phillips anyway so that doesn't bother me um, same kind of thing it's got a bushing uh, the one that's marked up and old is the old bushing this is the new one there is a slight different in height but not a lot um, then we'll see what we got for a spring here it's one difference already is um, the key in these screws that hold the uh, um, the uh, vacuum body on don't have a step to them so they're just a regular screw the ones that came off the original are stepped um, we'll have a look and see if we can get away with using the stepped ones again the reason I like the stepped ones over the regular ones is because you can control the torque a lot easier basically when this guy bottoms out against the carb body you can't make it any tighter so you're not gonna hurt the plastic at all so spring versus spring um, definitely stiffer so um, this is definitely a, a weaker spring uh, the weaker spring is going to allow the slide to come up more or quicker and is going to throw more fuel into the engine this would be better for low end throttle response that would be better for wide open um, it we'll see if we use that we're right now we're just doing a comparison of parts so here's the slide and the needle. Um, so we've got a retainer here. This is the needle retainer. So the spring fits over that like that. And then the needle fits in here. This is an OEM style needle that is non-adjustable. Um, no markings or anything on it. I don't know what the taper is on there. It's a fairly blunt taper. Um, so I'll we'll set these guys down so you can see the difference. So we're not going to use the old needle. We're going to use that, the the uh, uh, this needle, the 145, um, simply because it has a, a, a better taper to it and it'll give a more progressive throttle. Um, it, and that's kind of exactly what I expected with this. What I expected with with the Chinese carburetor is to use the body because this body is quite worn out. So and it's just age and. You know, those of you who have built motors over the years and have jetted stuff know that 
a 45 pilot from Kian is not the same as a 45 pilot from Brand X um, jet kit. So uh, with this, uh, what I've been able to do here, now these jets didn't look like this when I started. Um, these original jets uh, were um, put through a sonic cleaner. Um, so they're, they're nice, and, uh, nice and clean right now. They, they work really well. They actually I had this carburetor on the new motor. It runs fine. It idles a bit wonky because of the float trying to flood the bike all the time. And as soon as you shut the bike off, unless you turn the fuel off, it starts to leak. Now, one thing I've noticed that they do different here is uh, this guy is an original and it has a rubber damper right there. Whereas this one is more like the current Japanese style. Like if you, uh, if you find a, you know, like a TTR 230 or something that has a, a carb, a CV carb on it, it'll have one like this. So older technology, newer technology. Um, probably before I put it together, I'll throw a caliper on this height here. Cause that's the only height that really matters. Cause this sits up against the bed and this one is where the spring sits. This height is irrelevant. Onto the slide. Uh, looks pretty darn identical. Um, we've got the, the recesses for uh, the anti, uh, anti flutter. Um, you have your, you know, everything seems to be. It's a darn good copy. Your blades are the same length. Now, I say the same length. I'm not getting down into the tenth of a millimeter. Um, sure looks a lot nicer <laughs> but uh, I haven't even tried to see how it slides yet um, these are a one direction thing and of course I had it right the first time yeah it slides nice um, not much slop to it so that's really kind of nice I'm actually pretty surprised already that this is a, a decent little setup so we're gonna set that aside I haven't checked where uh, I don't know where my other vacuum cap is but um, this isn't getting changed anyway. I'll use the new one regardless. Um, so seeing as they gave me three pilots and three mains, I have no idea whether this actually has jets already installed. Um, and I will be honest, I don't have a, uh, a way to actually measure the jets other than cleaning pipes. So, or uh, cleaning files. So I'm just, I don't want to take the chance. That's one of the reasons I'm going to use the old, um, the old uh, jets. Um, those are nice. They actually come with uh, uh, lock washers on them. A lot of the new ones don't. Now this is being a PVK uh, copy. They're a little bit finicky to get the float bowl off because of the power jet, or uh, yeah, power jet. So. Uh, the O-ring is proud on there, which is nice. This is really nice and clean. Um, it's got new style floats. Um, that's kind of nice, actually. Really surprised at that. It's funny, I'll never be able to show you on the, uh, on the um, video, but there's actually screwdriver marks from where somebody actually put that in by hand, which is kind of cool. Um, Sorry, I should have had my screwdrivers out earlier. Um, if you're buying flatheads, if you do screwdrivers a lot, make sure you buy one like that that isn't flared. It allows you to get down into the jet orifices easier to unscrew those. Um, that particular one's a snap-on, but there's lots of them out there that do that. So. It says it's a 45 pilot. Yeah, and this one's a 45 as well. So. It's hard to tell, like we've got, a, uh, we've got the same length on the emulsion portion. Um,
course they want to come up together. So there's a difference, I think. Yep. So again, you're not going to be able to tell, but the emulsion, the emulsion holes on the side are actually a different size. Um, it looks to be in decent shape though. It's kind of surprising. Um, can't get that guy out. No. So this guy is a 170 main. 170 main. That's uh, that's not bad. This motor that I'm building is actually just a Stroker 80. Um, so I, I'm not sure exactly what the SNS Stroker kit cubes it out to. I can't remember off the top of my head, but it is just a uh, just a basic Stroker. Not not a lot. Now you see how that that's how that should be machine fit. Um, yeah, there we go. little bit concerned oh, okay so there was actually a bunch of assembly grease on that um, on this guy probably just to keep it fresh so it didn't dry out on the trip over from you know Zhangsheng or something like that so just on visual inspection it actually is fairly nice so I hate to say it, but, well, I don't hate to say it. It's not a good or bad thing. It's just a thing. So that's interesting. The the, um, the, pie, uh, the uh, fuel mixture screw was set at one and a half turns, which is, if you do your own carburetors, um, you'll know that's a good base setting to start with on pretty much anything. Uh, anything more than two, and uh, this is your idle jet. Uh, if it's changeable, you should make it richer. Uh, you can, I believe, Oh God, um, you can do the same thing. This is the one you should change. You can do the same by changing up the pilot and making it richer. If you're less than half a turn out, go the other way, make that one leaner. So this is probably pretty standard. Yeah, this is one thing I'm gonna be changing over to. This is a thumb screw for the adjustment. Um, Evos can be a little bit temperamental. They're not, it's not like tuning a, uh, you know, a, W650 or something like that. They're a little bit more finicky. Um, usual screw and, and a usual washer and the uh, O-ring always gets stuck in there. So if you're working on carburetors and you gotta do that, take a paper clip and just give it a little bit of a hook, just the tiniest of hooks. And you can reach in there. You'll be able to feel the O-ring. And pop it out. Hopefully not drop it inside the carburetor like I just did. So there we go. New fresh O-ring. So, upon disassembly, um, pretty damn impressed, to tell you the truth. Everything looks fairly well machined. Now, this is not the cheapest key and copy on Amazon. This is, it is also not the most expensive. Um, they ranged in price from $45 to uh, 180. So I, I went, but it jumped, like there was only one at 45 and the rest were between 85 and, and, uh, and uh, 180, I think it was. So um, just comparing a few things on it, I'm, it is a clone, and it's a fairly well-built clone. I'm, I'm surprised. It's, it's a copy of an original, so it's not too bad. When you get a copy of a copy of a copy, then you're going to get into issues. But right now, I'm pretty impressed with it. Um, this, uh, the blade insert to, uh, that the CB slide runs into um, yeah, they pressed it and machined it together. So it's pressed it first, machined it second. So it's, it's really nice to, uh, 
to see it's not machine separate this the machining like you know they're definitely using a decent uh, a decent CNC to do that it's got a nice surface finish to it very shiny surface finish um, some people say that's right some people say it's wrong you can still feel machining marks so it's probably not going to wet down the problem with having too smooth of an intake is that um, the fuel and air mixture will actually stick to it and wet down the the uh, cylinders but again this is you know an 80 i think it's an 88 cubic inch evo uh, if i remember right on the sns stroker kit um, it's a little tractor motor it's not meant to you know it's not meant to drag race or or pull wheelies or anything it's it's meant to make 50 60 horsepower for 200,000 kilometers <laughs> so it's you know it's very overbuilt and under stressed um, and this looks like it's going to be a good carburetor I'm actually going to take the chance and run all the original jets I think the only thing I'm going to change is this and uh, I think I might, I'm gonna run my, this spring versus this spring. So I just like to keep the slide down as much as I can. It, uh, it, it, not for performance, this will be better for performance, this will be better for fuel mileage. And uh, this gentleman who rides this bike is, uh, is a long distance rider. So we wanna give him as good a fuel mileage as we can. Um, you know, looking again, the bell mouth is, pretty decent um, so that's about it for now I'm going to reassemble the carb you don't need to watch me do that you just watch me take it apart so I'm gonna reassemble the carb and then I'll be back and we'll um, oh yeah that's the other piece I'm gonna use is the the old needle um, I'll reassemble it get it on the bike get the bike fired up and uh, then, or get it ready to fire up and then I'll have you with me for the initial startup of the bike with this carburetor on it. Talk to you in a minute. Okay, so here she is all back together. Um, my favorite 80s air cleaner cover. Um, that's about it, really. So far, so good with the, the carburetor. Like I say, I'll give another video if, uh, if it's not working the way I want it to. The way it's working right now is actually very acceptable. So we'll just power it up here. Oh, don't need the lights. is I would really like drag specialties to put their name on a carburetor like this um, simply because then it becomes available to a lot of people who have older Evos be it bagger FXR Sportster or whatever <coughs> that want a decent carburetor at, at a not too expensive price I think this carburetor is, is worth well what we paid for it I think it's gonna run for years in this bike um, it seems to be doing exactly what it's supposed to be doing. Um, it, it works. So thanks for watching again and uh, we'll see you next time.